and welcome to another episode of Ask a Physicist. I'm finally back and ready to answer many more of your many interesting questions. However, before I get back to that, there is something I would like to get out of the way. A special episode, if you will, telling you about what physics and science in general really is about. So, uh, I hope you enjoy this very special episode on physics and the scientific method. Well, there have been many YouTube videos about this topic already, and I welcome you to check them out. I noted them down in my description. However, seeing that I come from a physics background, I thought it would be good for me to give my two cents on the topic, and here they are. Well, in essence, all scientific work, including chemistry and biology, is based on the scientific method. While all sciences, including chemistry and biology, adhere to the scientific method, it can be most clearly understood if you look at it um, from a physics perspective. Allow me to illustrate that. In essence, in science, there are only four things. We have observations, theories, predictions and evidence. Well, so what are these? Well, in essence, uh, a scientist will observe a process, make an observation. Then he will come up with a theory to explain this process and to explain why it occurs. Then, from that theory, he will derive a prediction of other processes that should be happening or other effects relating to that process. Lastly, he will test these predictions and if they do occur, he will have evidence for that theory or if they don't, evidence against it. And then all that science really is about. Coming up with theories to explain physical processes and then testing those theories to see if they help us to explain the world around us. This method holds perfectly fine for all physical theories. So let me give you an example. An example of an observation might be that when I let go of this pen, it will drop to the ground. Yes, always works. Now that we have an observation, we need to come up with a theory to explain this event. Now obviously in ancient times, we just assumed that the Earth was flat and everything just uniformly fall in one given direction. This theory can easily be proven by the fact that the Earth is round and things do in fact fall to all sorts of different directions, depending where you are. A much better theory was, of course, developed by Isaac Newton, who gave us the theory of gravity. And, as I've mentioned before, this theory states that all objects that have mass attract each other towards each other, depending on the amount of their mass and their distance towards each other. Now, this theory perfectly explains why the things we let go of drop to the ground, i.e. they are attracted towards the Earth, which is very massive. So, what predictions does this theory make? Well, the theory says that all objects that have mass attract each other. So, if I was taken two masses, put them next to each other, and given that the forces which repel them are lower, and the gravitational attraction between them, they should slowly but surely move towards each other. And, well, lastly, testing this prediction. It has been done and is quite simple to do, really. The method. You take two heavy bolts, you suspend them next to each other on two metal rods, as shown in this graph, and you attach a mirror on the pivoting point. Now you shine a laser pointer on that mirror making a projection on the wall. Now, if the rod in the mirror was to turn due to the gravitational attraction of the heavy masses, the laser projected by the mirror would move much more noticeably than the mirror itself. This, even a small change in location of the battle balls, will be indicated on the wall that you're projecting the laser on. And, although the movement of the bolts will be very subtle due to the laser you'll be able to see it. Now, this experiment has in fact been done and is being done at many universities around 
the world for undergraduates to try out. So, and this is in fact evidence for Newton's theory of gravity. To run you through again, we ask your observation, we have theory to explain it, we have derived a prediction from this theory, and we have tested it, thus providing evidence for Newton's theory. A far more important prediction, perhaps, is that Newton was able to derive the motion of the planets around the Sun and the motion of the Moon around the Earth from his theory. And this predicted movement was in fact matched by the movement many astronomers at the time observed, i.e. it matched Kepler's laws of planetary motion, thus providing yet more evidence for Newton's theory. So, by application of the scientific method, we have already seen that there are two very credible pieces of evidence for Newton's theory. One, in fact, there have been many more, which would lead any sensible person to come to the conclusion that this is in fact a valid theory explaining the makings of our universe. However, as later shown by Einstein, it is not. As was observed by the astrophysicist Arthur Eddington, the gravitational force postulated by Newton does not only attract objects that have mass towards each other, but showed that um, even light, which was proven to have no mass at all, follows a curved trajectory when traveling near a heavy object like a star or planet. This showed that Newton's theory was at least not entirely accurate, even though it passed every test it was supposed to before that. The correct theory that was developed afterwards is, of course, general relativity, as termed by Einstein. But I don't want to dwell on that right now. The important point here is that no matter how much evidence you find for a given theory, it only takes a single piece of counter evidence to invalidate it. Now, in fact, while we think that general relativity is the answer now, one day maybe we prove that wrong as well. Now, seeing that any given theory could be disproven that simply, you might wonder if there is any certainty at all in the scientific results that we find. And well, I suppose in essence there isn't, but that is not the point. While the theories for which we have evidence, which we have not disproven yet, may be wrong, they are still, for now, the best guess we have at understanding the universe. You see, the scientific method is not necessarily about giving us certainty about what the universe is like, but it tells us our approach to finding out more about it. That really is the art of science.